Well, good morning, everybody. As you know, I'm Sheriff Joe Lombardo of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Today, we will release our final criminal investigative report on the 1 October mass casualty shooting. Joining me today are members of the force investigation team that put together this report. I commend them for their tireless work on this case and their commitment to provide as many answers from this investigation as possible. It's with a certain sense of relief that I stand before you today to say that we have completed a monumental task. Even though the investigation has ended for LVMPD, the heaviest burden will be carried by the families of those who didn't come home and those who suffered life-changing injuries and psychological trauma. The investigators on this case have lived this event day by day for the past 10 months. Finding answers for the victims has been our investigators' sole goal to help bring closure for those affected and to move forward from this horrible event. No doubt this has taken an incredible toll on the victims of this incident as it has our officers. Please know this is a criminal investigative report. I'll repeat that. Please know this is a criminal investigative report. This is not a review of every officer's actions or responses that took place that night. I mention this because over the last few months, as we released one October documents and body camera footage, many of you have asked for comment on the performance of specific employees during the incident. Those reviews are internal and are considered personnel matter. It will not be released to the public. Likewise, there, are, there were many heroic actions taken by our officers, other first responders, and civilians on 1 October. Many of those actions were not specifically mentioned in the report. Again, this report is focused on the criminal investigation. The goal of our investigation all along has been to provide the public with the clearest picture possible of the events leading up to 1 October, as well as motive. What we have been able to answer are the questions of who, what, when, where, and how. What we have not been able to definitively answer is the why Stephen Paddock committed this act. Some of the differences between the preliminary report and this report are the sequence of events surrounding Paddock's stay at the Ogden condominiums. Additionally, in the preliminary report, we told the story of what happened on 1 October based on accounts from key persons. This report has those key person interviews summarized and included in the actual report. This includes civilians, mostly hotel employees of Mandalay Bay and other properties, police personnel, specific to those that made it to the 32nd floor and entered Paddock's room and also detailing when officers Cook and Clarkson were struck by Paddock's gunfire upon their arrival at the venue. Also, a more detailed narrative as to the investigative responsibilities that various agencies and agency sections handled. Summaries of forensic analysis conducted by the FBI's lab in Quantico, <coughs> Virginia, relating to DNA and firearms identifying which guns were fired, an examination of every spent shell casing, and lastly, the comparison of the round recovered from Paddock's head to the firearm associated with his suicide. A lock interrogation summary, a financial analysis summary, and lastly, a suspectology section on Paddock to include interview summaries of his family and his doctor. Included in the appendix, will be the actual lock interrogation reports from both rooms 135 and 134 and all autopsy related documents from the Clark County Coroner's Office. By all accounts, Stephen Paddock was an unremarkable man whose movements leading up to October 1st didn't raise any suspicion. An interview with his doctor indicated signs of a troubled mind but no troubling behavior that would trigger a call to law enforcement. Without a manifesto or even a note to answer questions, the totality of the information that has been gathered leaves us to only make an educated guess 
as to the motives of Stephen Paddock. Today is still incredibly difficult to try to comprehend this senseless act of violence. The FBI's Behavioral Analysis Unit, BAU, will issue the report, its report, that will go into detail about the psychopathology of Paddock. The report is anticipated to be released sometime at the end of the year. As for LVMPD, we are considering this investigation complete unless new information comes to light. Our responsibility to all 58 people who died on 1 October drove, drove us to leave no stone unturned in order to find answers. I hope that the conclusion of this investigation provides some answers and some closure. The report will be available on LVMPD's website at lvmpd.com, which you can see immediately following the conclusion of this press conference. With that, I'll be happy to answer some questions. Sheriff, one of the first questions. You just said you don't know the motive. Correct. 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 Was this terrorism? Uh, well, that depends on the definition. Um, if you look at the state definition, it would fall within that aspect. If you look at the federal definition, no. Um, as we all know, terrorism label is administered by the FBI. They have privacy. It's also a matter of court. Uh, Correct. Violence. Um, does Las Vegas Police Department call this a terrorist act? I would personally call it a terrorist act. It had an influence on a certain demographic of people intended to cause harm, to include injuries. Any update on Mary Lou Danley and where uh, your interaction with her stands? No. We are completed with our uh, interviews with her. Uh, we don't anticipate any future interviews, um, but they may still be in the preview of the FBI. Is it possible Ms. Danley could be charged with a crime? At this point, no. Is it possible anybody uh, related to this case could be charged with a crime, helped him in any way? Uh, no, sir. We're not aware of any individual that we anticipate charging. Sheriff, there are people in the release of records that we've received from the department over the last 13 months, since May 2nd. There have been people who said that they encountered Mr. Paddock in the days before Mandalay Bay and that he expressed opinions uh, that seemed to suggest a motive. Would you address that? Uh, well, I don't know specifically what you're making reference to, Ken. The restaurant, um, the, the sounded like uh, um, anger govern at government, at, at regulation. Well, we're aware of some of the comments made to uh, various individuals, uh, but like I said, it's similar to the doctors um, evaluation of him, none of those rose to the suspicion of law enforcement that would lead us to follow up and conduct investigation, nor were we contacted by any individuals that had suspicion of Mr. Paddock. Sheriff, you had mentioned that um, he, early on, that you had seen him on a losing streak or bad gambling streak. Um, do you get the sense that that still holds true, that the motive of the shooting may be in part to his frustration? I think it's part and parcel. Uh, as you just see in the final report, his financial analysis is provided. I had uh, quoted earlier that I believe a substantial portion of his wealth had diminished in the previous year, uh, which is, shows evident in the report, and that could have been a contributing factor. Sheriff, you said um, reviews of officers actions and activities uh, were internal. Would you Correct. tell us if any officers have been disciplined for their actions? In the Not case? at this point, Ken. Uh, we are conducting some active investigations. Uh, in a broader sense, um, what's the status of Metro's review of the total response and things like um, how the communication system worked and other aspects of the response to the show? Well, the, the communication system is a matter of opinion. Uh, I personally believe the communication system worked good. Uh, in any critical incident, um, you are going to have an overwhelming convergence of individuals attempting to communicate via the system. Um, and there's no system in the world that can handle that kind of volume um, in a short period of time. Uh, quite often what has been quoted is communications issues between the officers, with the officers, and our dispatch center. Uh, but that is nothing more than officers talking over the top of each other. Uh, I personally believe the communication system was sound and robust. Sheriff, 
we haven't seen the report you have. Um, does it change timeline, which was so difficult to pin down at the beginning? Does it change timeline to finality? Are you confident? First of all, does it provide us a timeline? Uh, yes, it does. Um, and there has been no changes since probably the later iterations of the press conferences. Mm -hmm. And I had admonished folks up front um, with that issue, particular issue. And what people have to be aware of, it's still dyna dynamic in close proximity of the event, and there was many disparate systems that we were receiving information from. So it takes a long time to compare those disparate systems and overlay the times on the top of each other. But as far as the time associated with this carnage, I believe those times are pat. So And so they'll be provided in this final report yes. to be able to see that. Those, yes. those times are pat. Yes. Okay. We're comfortable with our review of that. Uh, how large was the investigation? How many investigators were on this uh, for month one to month? Ten? You know what, uh, Ricardo, I really wouldn't be able to give you a, uh, I can give you an approximate answer on the, the size, but the scope of, of individual officers and participants is a thousand plus. You know, just the volumes of the evidence that had to be reviewed, um, depictions of Mr. Paddock, images, uh, videos, surveillance um, and everything else that goes along with it, suspects and, and possible suspect statements, uh, victim statements, witness statements, is voluminous. Um, I had given you before in excess of 21,000 hours of video had to be reviewed, um, thousands of documents, um, and in particular, I, I'll take this opportunity. At the, at the behest of the court system, um, we were mandated to provide body-worn camera footage and document footage as part of a public information request, and that has taken several thousand hours. Um, I've had 12 full-time detectives put in place to provide that information on a, a weekly basis, uh, so it's vast and extensive. Um, so it's it, and which is to be expected of something of this size. Sheriff, on those records, body worn cameras, 911 calls, uh, police reports, etc. Uh, we're s still anticipating receiving more next week. Correct. Uh, do you have any indication how many more weeks we should anticipate? Please? You know, I was briefed, and granted, those things change on a daily basis. But uh, my best anticipation would be two to three weeks. I anticipate maybe two to three three more releases and we should be at its uh, finality. Now, granted, there's going to be some more requests comes in as you read through this final report um, that's going to indicate a request for public information um, to better describe some of the things annotated in the report. So you anticipate the report will raise other questions? I'm sure. Will you be able to answer them or is this your final word? Um, clarify your question. <laughs> We have asked questions at the release of various um, uh, records, um, and we were told that the report was not complete yet. Correct. Um, now that we have the report, can we, um, will we be able to ask specific questions about specifics of the report and receive answers? We anticipate we'll be able to provide you some solace in that and, and some answers, but. I want to remind folks that even though I say the investigation on behalf of LVMPD is complete, it's still a living document, it's still an, continued to be an open investigation. We may receive information at a later date that we incorporate to that, and we have to keep that in mind in its finality. So there may be some information that you desire that we can't provide you because of that certain point um, of contention. I want to ask you if you can uh, characterize for us, this is a tough question to ask, you and we have been very much focused on one individual. Correct. You tell us this one individual is the per person who is responsible for and who carried out this act. Um, how do you want, to, want him remembered as, how do you want to characterize him? Uh, well, it was very hard for me to even mention his name today. And you've heard me in previous press conferences, I would not mention his name because I don't want to give him any notoriety or be reminded of this individual. Uh, so to answer your question, um, it probably ends today. Uh, so 
I don't want to remember this individual. I will remember the act and the victims, but I will not remember the suspect. You were talking about closure at the beginning. Have you talked to the families of the survivors before this report was released about it being released today, or what kind of closure will they get from this living document? I think that's open to interpretation of the family. Um, and, you know, in any tragic event, especially a loss of life, I, or, you know, an example being a missing person, um, ha having those questions unanswered is very troublesome. Um, in any loss of life, if you can have some modicum of closure, it helps you move through your psychology and your life in general. And now, I can't put myself in the minds of each one of those individual families. I don't know how they assimilate grief or deal with grief, um, but it is my role as a police agency and the head of the agency to try to give them some closure, and hopefully this report will do that. Sheriff, sure. uh, oh, sorry. Um, I, this is probably in the report, but um, does the final report shed any more light on the materials that were found in his car? Um, yes, and, it does. And secondly, um, the sequence of events that led to him uh, killing himself, did you guys pin down whether it was something that he was reacting to that caused him to stop the attack when he did? Uh, that's open to interpretation. Um, we all know that he was aware that there was uh, security officials and maybe even police officials in close proximity of his room. Uh, so I don't know what went through his mind at that point to make that decision. So it's open to interpretation. Um, there are fringes on the internet uh, that provided... Um, Can you say that again? There are fringes, fringes and, uh, on the internet, the internet yeah. that provided uh, conspiracies that spread widely mm -hmm. on the internet. Uh, did that cause any issues for the investigation? No, no. You know, that, that's one of the things that we alluded to in the public information request of all the body-worn cameras and documents and stuff is quite often with the release of that information, you have people that um, believe they are smarter than you or keyboard cowboys uh, that attempt to provide you information uh, for you to change your investigation or your direction of your investigation. And we have to uh, adapt to that because some of it might be viable information, but a lot of it's a waste of time. And so to answer your question, Ricardo, it, it did not change our directions in totality or in, in a majority of what we were doing in the present time. So our investigation direction was sound, and uh, we believed in what we were doing was being successful. And Sheriff? Thanks for being so direct in response to these questions today. Will you please address um, assertions that there were conspiracies behind this and that there were second or multiple guns? Uh, absolutely. Um, no conspiracies have been identified, and there has been no other gunmen identified other than Mr. Paddock. Were there no other shootings at other casinos or properties in Las Vegas at, uh, in, at the same time? None. No other shootings that we have identified. You know, one of the explanations behind that, Ken, is just to provide you some clarification, is we had people evacuating the scene that sustained injuries. They had blood splatter. They had blood uh, evidence uh, upon their person. And as they entered other venues, it was believed by people that were already occupying the venues that they have may have obtained those injuries within the venue that they evacuated to. So there was a belief there were shooters present on those properties. Um, we quickly put those to bed um, because of the way we were trained to address multiple attack locations. Um, but as you can imagine, the chaos associated with this. Understood. We, we heard some pretty specific accounts. Right. Well, even, you know, I'll be frank, I'll be right up front with you. Even my people gave specific accounts on the radio system, but they were, that was based on third party information. Um, and that's why it's important to put those kind of things to bed as soon as possible. Uh, so, and I think we did a pretty good job in a short period of time of doing that. Single shooter, no conspiracy. Single shooter, no conspiracy. He was not radicalized, right? Just to we have no knowledge of that. Sheriff, I kind of stepped on your answer to my own question. A minute okay. Ago. Uh, uh, did you find out anything, anything more about what was in his car and what he planned to do with it? Yes. Oh, no. Oh, hold on. That was a two-part question. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Slow down there. Yes, we did. Um, the report will uh, better identify what was present in his vehicle. And as far as motive, it is unknown. 
Now you could take, make an interpretation of was located in the vehicle. Was there an escape plan that he uh, wanted to cause further harm at another location if in fact he escaped? Or was it just a matter of supplies he utilized during target practice? Um, we're unable to answer that question. Are we going to find something in the report in reference to the missing hard drive? Uh, no, there is nothing in there because we have no idea uh, where the hard drive is or when it was removed. Uh, we have information through his uh, previous relationships that that was a uh, regular practice of him to remove hard drives from the computer systems that he utilized. For what reason, unknown. Uh, we all are aware that he had depictions of child pornography on his current computer. Maybe that was to um, get rid of that evidence. Who knows? Uh, but we have no idea when that hard, particular hard drive was removed. It could have been years previously, or it could have been in short proximity of the shooting. But we have not located the missing hard drive. Is the, is the child pornography that was on his hard drive, his brother was arrested also for child pornography on this computer. Is there part of any kind of investigation that involves Stephen Paddock as well as his brother? Are you guys checking into those connections as well? Yes, sir, we are. Sheriff, one of um, it's probably the kind of question you anticipated. Could this happen again? And what has changed? What would you do to prevent it? Well, that's a, that's a pretty good question, Ken. Um, the question is, could this happen again? Yes, absolutely it could happen again. Um, by the grace of God, it doesn't. And, you know, one thing I've always said as the head of the, agent, of the law enforcement agency, you can what if till the cows come home. You know, you can't prevent every act of evil in, in your um, toolkit. Um, but the most important piece is that you respond to it appropriately and quickly uh, to mitigate the threat. Um, so we've done some proactive things uh, to address these. You, you may have seen what's going on in Chicago with Lollapalooza. They mentioned Las Vegas and the target hardening of their event. Uh, we, we're, we have that as a matter of practice in any of our current events. Um, we supply additional medical folks to our events now. Uh, we have Overwatch folks associated with the event, and we do the best we can to limit the ingress and egress of individuals coming and going. Um, so there's a lot of preventive measures that are put in place during events now that we didn't have in place before. And there's a lot of continuance of surveillance and overwatch during the events that we didn't have in place before. So hopefully we meet with success with those preventive measures. And you know, the other piece on that, and it's important for people to understand, we've had a very, very cooperative agreement with uh, local security, private security, and assisting us in all these type of endeavors. Um, and they have changed their profile. And I'll let them speak to their, their profile to you individually if you reach out to them, but their profile is more robust than it has ever been. So if you're asking me, is Las Vegas a safe community? Yes. It's a, is it a safe tourist community? Yes. And um, we're only going to get better. How many of your employees were devoted full-time to this investigation? And now what will they do with the release of this report? Well, that question was asked by Ricardo in some aspect. I can't give you a definitive number. Um, if you would like us to provide you some sort of um, approximate, approximate number, we can do that after the press conference. Sheriff Lombardo, uh, yes. does this final report show any security measures that could have been taken by Mandalay Bay or any personnel there that could have possibly prevented this? Or no, anything the report that doesn't allude to those, any of those. So, and I'm not going to make public comment on that. Sheriff, do we have a, a, any better sense of, of when Paddock began planning this attack? No. Um, you will see in the report, like I said, it, it includes the timeline associated with the Ogden condominiums. Uh, so you can make a leap on your own. And I think it's an easy leap to make uh, that he may have been evaluating uh, this carnage with that location earlier um, in the year. Well, you know, when I say early in the year, a couple weeks. Um, so um, you can make that evaluation from what we surmise in the report. We had talked. Outside of that timeline, no. We or you had talked early on about a year earlier things happening in Mr. Paddock's life a year earlier? Do you see any? Yeah, and, that, and you know, that was the, 
the giving away of the money to Mary Lou Danley, that was the purchasing of the firearms, um, the, the gambling. Um, he wasn't as successful in gambling as he had been in the previous years. Uh, so you could put that all together as a package, the comments made by his uh, personal physician. Um, so there's some leaps that have to be made by, by individuals. Um, but to the best of our recollection as a law enforcement agency and our experience and, and wherewithal and know-how, um, I think it's a combination of all that. You will see what is perceived to be a diminishing mental capacity in the report. Uh, what, what, how do you mean that? I said perceive, people's opinions. Oh. I think the best answer I could give you is to read the report. Okay, their summaries provided on what they believe to be uh, Mr. Paddock's mental state. All right, thank you very much for your time and cooperation. And uh, if you have any clarifying questions that need to be answered, um, the individual detectives and supervisors and or the PIO's office can provide you those answers. Thank you.